Truckers protesting COVID mandates in Canada have impacted the U.S. auto industry and other aspects of the economy, including trade. We asked Professor Sopal Ear, Associate Dean at the Thunderbird School of Global Management at ASU, about the impact of the protests here in Arizona. So, Paul, welcome to Arizona Horizon. We appreciate your time as we talk about this, this trucker situation at the Canadian border with the U.S. Um, what is the latest on this? It sounds like things might be dying down a little bit. Indeed. I, I actually think that uh, finally it's taking a turn because yesterday Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau of Canada declared a national emergency to end the, the protest. So he's taking action and he is now... Uh, deciding to uh to to use forces to uh to actually stop the protesters threatening to confiscate and 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 tow away all all these trucks that are blocking certainly ottawa and, and other places yeah it sounded like ottawa was paralyzed there for a while the impact of this on the u.s economy in general the auto industry in particular well you know especially in the case of uh detroit and and windsor uh, Canada, that bridge that uh, connected the two was a huge thoroughfare for uh, for auto parts going back and forth. So the the inability to uh, to transport these parts uh, has has obviously caused a lot of damage. Now, I'm not sure of of the percentage wise economic impact, but obviously it it became so significant that Trudeau used uh, the economic damage. Uh, caused by this this paralysis to uh, to call it a, a, a state of emergency. Is it the kind of thing where we might see even higher prices? We're already seeing higher prices on cars, especially used cars. But could this kind of thing have a, a little bit of a ripple effect for a while? Certainly. I mean, we've already got all these supply chain issues, right? Microchips that aren't available for the completion of new vehicles and therefore causing the substitute of new vehicles, the next best thing, used cars to become more and more expensive. But because it was, you know, it's only been a couple of weeks of this, I, I don't think, as long as it stops now, I don't think it's going to be a dramatic impact. It might be a, a, a blip on the screen, a, a, a bit of a rough patch there, but hopefully nothing more than that going forward, as long as we turn the corner and really, and really return to normalcy. Does that apply to Arizona's economy? And well, we're, we're far ways off here from Canada, but we have trade issues and Canada trade, Arizona and Canada have a good trade relationship. We certainly do. Canada and Arizona are actually uh, surprising. When I was looking into this, they, there's a very uh, significant relationship, actually. Um, we, uh, in Arizona, export to Canada uh, quite a bit. Uh, Arizona uh, really has... Uh, $349 million worth of vegetables exports to Canada, $149 million worth of air, aircraft and parts, uh, really significant amounts of, of, of exports that would be, uh, you know, uh, problematic for, uh, for the Canadians to receive if, if these truckers are blocking the way. Uh, and of course, Canada imports or rather exports to uh, Arizona as well. So in total, about uh, $2.2 billion uh, of Arizona imports in goods uh, from Canada annually. Uh, so that's quite significant. And Arizona exports $1.9 billion in goods to Canada annually. So with that said, and with what's going on and how it is seemingly like it's dying down a little bit here, will we see ripple effects here in Arizona for a while? And if so, how long? Well, I think that be, given that the, 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 the immediate problem was on the border itself and obviously in, in Ottawa, the capital city, uh, hopefully that wasn't significantly uh, these vegetables from Arizona and, and aircraft parts and so on. Uh, but, uh, but instead, uh, if any delays were caused, uh, they're not going to be delayed any further. If you're talking about vegetables, if, it, if they're delayed a couple of weeks, they spoil. But if you're talking about, um, about uh, uh, parts and, and uh, you know, things that are obviously not going to spoil, that's not going to really cause a major problem. I think that over time, um, the, consequence of the consequences of this will dissipate. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so last question here. Um, what lessons are learned here regarding the interdependence between the U.S. and Canada on trade and on the ability to cross the border? That interdependence is incredibly uh, important because Canada is our major trading partner, right? I mean, we, 
we have such a relationship uh, with Canada and Canada with us that it makes it very difficult to suddenly uh, cause a, uh, a choke point like a bridge that uh, allows so much activity, economic activity to take place to somehow be uh, displaced as a result of truckers. And, and by the way, this, the lesson from this isn't, isn't new. Uh, there were uh, truck protests during uh, the oil crisis of the 1970s. Uh, they've used this ability of what's really, you know, a mass disruption uh, to, to cause uh, flows of goods to stop. And so truckers know that when they're not happy with, you know, vaccination uh, mandates, uh, the Canadian ones are, are not happy with the Canadian vaccination mandates, that, that uh, they, can, they can really uh, uh, punch where it hurts in terms of stopping the, uh, the, the arteries of the system from working. And, uh, and I guess the indulgence of the Canadian government has ended. Uh, Sopal Air, uh, Thunderbird School of Global Management at ASU. Good conversation. Good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.